Hello, it's Jimmy here with Orly. So I'm looking at a Peugeot 308 here. Mm -hmm. It's a 1.6 HDI diesel. And I'm going to tell you some interesting facts that um, happens with these cars and a lot of other brands are doing similar issue, similar setups, I'd say is the right word, where you have to bring the car in for expensive repairs for no apparent reason. Okay, now this car is driven over to me from out of town. I don't remember where from exactly, but I had a quick look at the codes here. Now, it's been quoted uh, and told, obviously, it needs new additive tank, new ad blue, uh, sorry, not ad blue, new DPF, and various other bits and pieces that are going to amount up to more than the car's worth, basically. Okay, so I'm using my launch Eurotab 3 scan tool here. I'm going to get the codes up that we're looking at. So we have P1445 additive injected into the FAP has exceeded. Sorry, let me get that screen locked in there so it's not trying to focus. So what that's basically saying there, the f must be changed, the FAP must be changed, so that's, the, that's the DPF basically. So that's French for you, I don't know why they call it a FAP, but it's a DPF. Now as well as the DPF needing to be replaced, never mind the twin speed fan, whatever, right? So we've also got the multiplex additive pump, which needs to be replaced as well. Why do both of these need replaced at the same time? Let's have a look. Let's get that over there. 120,000 miles. So almost 120,000 miles to the dot these warnings came on. Engine failure. Visit a local dealership sign up here. Message coming up um, saying drive, uh, engine error or something of the other. Let's do a cycle of the key and uh, get a re refresh refreshment of what that was saying. Engine fault, repair needed. And then you've got a big warning sign down here. Okay, so does the diesel particle filter need to be replaced? Well, no, it doesn't. Now, he's driven, obviously, a little bit with the warning being on, which again is another purposeful thing that they'll know you that they'll know you're gonna do is when the light comes on you're gonna drive it a little bit. When that light comes on, I could almost guarantee that there's nothing wrong with the DPF whatsoever. I've never seen probably one I've seen that actually needed the DPF replaced out of hundreds I've seen. So you go to the data stream and we look at the exhaust line information distance remaining before the particle filter needs to be replaced and then we'll look at the difference in the pressure so the difference in the pressure is the only thing that is going to point out if the DPF needs to be replaced or not so we've got a slightly high reading but nothing that would suggest it needs replacing now remember the guy has driven sort of 700 miles now with that on so I can almost guarantee at the point that it came on that pressure would have been sort of exactly where it needed to be around about four or five millibars maybe six millibars I mean it's idling between 13 to 17 millibars fluctuation at the minute so arguably it could, it could do with a clean but it definitely doesn't need a, a DPF replacement okay now if we switch the engine off we'll come back out of the live data and now I'm gonna do a clean on this one and I'm gonna reset all of these faults so if we have a look here now with the additive tank you can reset them and sometimes they will just wake back up you'll hear a ticking noise come from the tank at the rear wheel arch on the passenger side if it doesn't tick you're gonna need a new additive tank but this part here we're just talking about the DPF itself now if we go to special function so we're gonna clean the DPF on this but um, I'm just showing you besides that bit uh, we'll go to pack reparation replacement parts and just tell it it's had a replacement particle filter now as long as your DPF pressure is not stupidly high if you if you've got 50 millibars of pressure at idle or to say 30 millibars of pressure at idle 
doing this without cleaning it, uh, it can be dangerous because then the vehicle is going to try and do a regen. There's going to be a lot of combustible material in the DPF and it will get it will overheat and possibly damage it. So if you can flush the DPF, it's going to be safer. But tell it it's had a replacement DPF. Do the cycle there where it's on and off with the ignition. Programming is done. Now that we've done that, come back to the live data. Now these numbers are a little bit off on this, I don't know why it's saying crazy numbers, but if you can see now, that's moved from zero miles until it needs a new particle filter to 400, and <laughs> whatever that is, 493,000 miles or something. So now, if we come back, let's just pay, pay no attention to that mileage, I don't know why it's coming up with that, but now if we go to these codes, yeah, we can now clear these codes. Please input the mileage of the car. 2771. So that's now going to calculate how many miles it needs before this fault comes back again. Now we'll switch the ignition off and wait for that to shut down. Now we've come out of the data stream, go back to the codes again. No trouble codes. So that's it. That's all done now. The DPF fault has now gone. And like I said, no trouble codes there. We're gonna clean the DPF out just so it doesn't try and do a forced regen and overheat. And in case I didn't mention it at the start of the video, this, I always get asked, it, this diagnostic machine I'm using to do that is a launch Eurotab 3. I mean, like I said before, if you wanna risk just doing the reset, you can be lucky and maybe get away with it, depending on, on how much pressure is in your DPF. Um, some people would say, now you could just run a force region and it'll be fine, but safer way to do it is just put some clean and flush through the DPF and get it cleaned out. So this is the pipe I'm removing, and if you're not sure which pipe you need to remove on your car, you can use a digital manometer. So that's going to look something like this, and you get it connected up to the pipes. Now what that does is, if you see the, which, which one of the pipes have the highest pressure, that's where you're going to put your cleaning fluid. Okay, so I'm going to use a bottle of launch DPF cleaner. I've got the launch gun here. So I'll pull the fluid in here, connect it up to my compressor at 131 PSI. Connect that up to the DPF pressure hose there that we've disconnected. And we can squeeze the trigger. Get all of that fluid squeezed into the DPF there. So I'm going to put about half of this bottle in, and we'll release it. We'll start the car back up, and I'll hold the trigger again. We'll get all of this fluid pushed in with the engine running. So all of the fluid in, close it down. So let's hold the engine now at 100, uh, sorry, 3,000 revs, and we can see the pressure coming down. Wait until we see that come down around sort of 40 or 50 millibars and if we let go of the accelerator we should see fairly less pressure than we had at the start. With the cleaning fluid you'll see smoke coming out for five or ten minutes until that clears away and if we let the engine idle down now you can see we have three millibars of pressure which is perfect so now we can see by doing what we've done the car is now out of the restricted mode so we've got full revs limp mode is gone he's got his power back in the car and what that limp mode does is once once the car detects that fault or some of these faults you'll go into limp mode and as you drive it then in the, in the limp mode your DPF is just going to start clogging up. So usually by the time you bring it to a garage your DPF is already now blocked. So yeah, that's just how it works. So now if we get our diagnostic machine back up here, let's just, just get that sitting there and come back into the engine ECU. No fault codes. So that's it, full power is restored, doesn't need a new DPF. And if the additive tank needs replacing, we'll do that on a separate video. 
But for now, that's it. All done, and I'll see you on the next video.